Yes, the last couple of years have been very strong for the property industry. The, the trend to, of people moving into the mega cities is, is still going on and will continue to go on, and, and that has its impact. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, any investor into real estate will have had a very strong time. And frankly speaking, with these low interest rates environments, there are not a lot of clouds in the sky for that type of investments. Um, we're hearing that Sydney's come off, that Manhattan's come off. We can see very clearly, Jeff and I, on a daily basis, that London's come off as well. Anything to be concerned of uh, well, about yet? Coming off a very, very strong level. Incredible so, levels. Yes. And so we still should rate that as good property markets. Uh, London has been coming off obviously very much so on the residential sector, less so on the office sector. Mm. And, and the office developers in London have been very smart after that surprising referendum to kind of put down their pencils a little bit and, mm. and be cautious about bringing new new space into the market. So the London market is still very healthy yeah. considering the environment. Yeah, when we speak to Jeff and I on a regular basis, Mr. Grigg and, uh, and Robert Noel as well, I mean, they've been quite canny about this, you know, not necessarily having quite so many gherkins going up uh, or cheese graters, smaller projects as well. But a big difference, of course, between CRE and real estate. Can I just concentrate on the real estate just for one moment as well? There used to be a place called Vauxhall that I used to drive through with the, with the doors locked. Now they call it Nine Elms and they put 30,000 units on there and decided it was very trendy all of a sudden as well. A um, lot of Property get a lot of supply coming to market, potentially a very good thing, but again, that has a natural dousing effect. Yeah, I mean, obviously on the residential side, you had a lot of property coming into the market. And as you know, there was a lot of foreign investment. So these apartments were sold to overseas buyers. I mean, this is obviously at the moment taking a bit of a pause. Yeah. People want to see where Brexit is going and what implications that will have. And so it's very hard to predict how quickly they will come back. It obviously is also correlating with, with exchange rates. So what will the Come pound on. do? Just follow that one thing. Um, Brexit, I, I can't help thinking, it, for many sectors, is the greatest red herring of all time. But what I don't think is the greatest red herring of all time is if we get a hard socialist government in the United Kingdom. And there are many indications that Mr Corbyn is far to the left of the last Labour administration we had, which was centre-left under Mr uh, Blair and then Mr Brown as well. Should the market fear much more a hard left government rather than a Brexit? I think the market does fear that much more and, and so I think that would be the worst worst case scenario for, for the market. I, I, there's still a lot of uh, kind of hope in the market that pragmatism in, 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 in the UK will prevail and it will not come to a hard Brexit and that scenario which just you described. Yeah. As, we, as we look at the marketplace at the moment, um, could you share with our audience where you see any potential opportunities at the moment? I mean some segments have been really beaten down, particularly around retail as the market has adjusted its view based on the digital retail proposition and whether we need big shopping malls now. But where do you think there's real value and opportunity? Well, I think grade A office space still offers opportunity. There has been a very strong trend over the last couple of years that corporate users are seeing that space less so than just a cost, but much more a, a room where their employees can strive, be more productive and have a great experience. And, and so whoever is able to offer really brilliant office buildings will get great tenants in and so that is still a, a very favorable well, investment. Let me put it another way Christian as well. I, I've been, we've all been on a lot of panels this week and one of my panels was talking about how do you know what millennials ain't gonna go to offices and they ain't gonna work nine to five and they're just they got no interest in that they, and they want flat management structures. My point being is they're gonna be doing a lot of home working as well. Is the threat to the traditional office space that he and I cut our teeth in and work in our eight to six or nine to five or currently uh, six to nine mm. um, <laughs> but but is that over? I would strongly disagree with that view. What we see, the more the world goes digital, the higher is the need for collaboration between human beings. And so we see our people coming even more into the office than they may have had that before on their daily routine. Um, they want to talk to each other. They don't want to sit at a boring desk. They want to sit in a, in, a, in a trendy space, talk to each other, move to somebody else and Go interact. To the soft area. Yeah, soft areas, <laughs> collaborative areas, as we would call them.